Welcome to the FileHold video tutorial series. The focus of this presentation is the events and retention policies functionality in FileHold. This presentation is aimed at users responsible for managing the schemas and metadata fields for documents and records stored inside the library, and records managers and those following record retention programs such as Sarbanes-Oxley, HIPAA, or DOD 5015. The topics to be covered in this video include why retention policies are so important, the types of retention policies and events that you can set up inside of FileHold, and how to set these up, and reviewing these events in the FileHold calendar. So why do you need retention policies? Well, the biggest reason for imp implementing retention policies is the legal one. It is critical for organizations to assess their current state of preparedness to determine how well they can safely and efficiently respond to an e-discovery request or a governmental inquiry. It is highly recommended any company have a records retention policy which complies with federal and state or provincial guidelines. If you keep too much data and are sued, the litigant has the right to go through all the data retained. When documents and records are retained through neglect, an organization may possess old, inaccurate, invalid, or damaging information. But if you have a policy which adheres to retention policies, you are only liable to retain the information within those guidelines, and that information is all that may be used in the event of a lawsuit. It is advisable to seek legal counsel when setting up your policies. If information is being created in large quantities each business day, and is retained indefinitely rather than being destroyed, the organization creating them is experiencing uncontrolled growth of its records. Without retention policies, most organizations lack any effective mechanism to eliminate their expired data. Another good reason is, while the cost of disk space is relatively inexpensive, this does not take into account the overall cost associated with managing the data. According to Strategic Research, an information technology research firm, for every $1 per megabyte spent on disk storage, the total spent in managing that storage ranges from $3 to $8 per megabyte per year. The types of events inside of FileHold include deletion, archive, uh, converting electronic documents to records, and user-defined events. Deletion events. After a period of time, documents can be automatically deleted from the system. Upon deletion, documents are stored in a soft deletion phase. In the soft deletion phase, documents can still be recovered and moved back into the document repository by a library administrator. The second stage of deletion is a hard deletion phase where documents are permanently removed from the system after the retention period for the soft deletion phase is met. Archiving events. After a certain period of time, documents can be moved down into the library archive. The library archive is an area in file hold where documents that are no longer in use but still need to be kept for historical record purposes are stored. The advantages of archiving are that it keeps your current documents in the library up to date and your search results uncluttered with old or obsolete information. Uh, up next is the convert to records events. After a certain period of time, electronic documents can be converted into records automatically. The record can no longer be checked out, but remains in the library. So in other words, electronic documents, while well, it's in, a, in the electronic document format, this can be checked out and modified and checked back in as a new version. Whereas once it's been converted to a record, it no, can no longer be checked out. Lastly, we have user-defined events. In user-defined events, Nothing itself is happening to the document. After a period of time, an email and or a document alert can be sent to recipients to notify them of an important date or event. 
no action is taken upon the document itself. So for example, we have here a work policy that needs to be reviewed once a year, and that work policy has a expiration date as a metadata field. 30 days prior to the expiry of that policy, uh, users are notified via email and or a document alert of the appending expir expiration date. So we have some examples here of some retention policies. So for example, you can have big bank statements that are automatically deleted after four years. We have employee records. They automatically get archived after the employee is terminated. And then those same employee records get deleted three years after they've been terminated. We have some contracts that are converted to record upon signing and then they're deleted after seven years. Here's some user-defined event examples. Uh, so we have some policy documents. They are to be renewed once a year and an alert is to be sent out 30 days prior to the policy expiration. We also have one for passports. Again, passports have an expiration date as well, and they need to be renewed every five years. So six months prior to the passport expiration date, the owner of that passport will get a notification. So we're gonna go through some examples on how to set up these events. The steps that we're gonna to show today in the demonstration are how to enable the event types in the system administration area, then we're going to create the event rule in the library administrator area. Then we're going to apply the rule that we've created to a schema. And then we're going to show you these events in the system once they've been created. Now we're going to start the live demo. And the live demo, in the live demo, we're going to be creating a deletion policy where after four years, the bank statements will get automatically deleted. And we're also going to create a user-defined event one where policy documents expire once a year and the owner of those policy documents need to be notif notified 30 days prior. So as I mentioned, we first need to enable the event schedules in the system administrator area of FileHold. So I've already logged in through the web client and I'm going to go to the system admin area and then I'm going to go to my general page. And under event schedule settings, this is where I'm going to enable all the rest types of policies and events that I'm going to use as part of my record retentions. So we have convert to records, archiving, delete, and user defined. Um, I've already used these in my test system, so that's why they're already enabled. So if you haven't done that, uh, please do so now. And then you can click update to save those settings. Now once that's done, we're going to go over to the library admin area. And what we want to do is we now want to create the event types. So I'm going to go to library admin events. And I'm going to add my event. My first event I'm going to create is my bank statements. And I'm going to delete after four years. So I've given my event a name. I can also give it a description, but I feel that this name is descriptive enough. And my type is going to be delete. So here is all the types in the dropdown. Now you have some options here. You can make it relative to the day that the document was created. So that's the day that it was added into FileHold. The last time the document was modified, the last time the metadata was modified, or if you're using a metadata field inside of that schema, so my bank statement schema, then I could base it on that date. But I'm gonna base it on my document created date because that's the date it was added, and I want them deleted four years after they were added into the system. So my period is going to be four years. And I also want to send some notifications. So these notifications can be sent out to the system and senior library administrators. 
and they'll receive an email letting them know that these bank statements are ready to be deleted from the system. And I go ahead and set my just going to make it uh, the system administrators. Click save. All right, so now I've created my rule or my deletion policy. I'm going to save it and I'm going to return to my list and now I'm going to create one more type and as I mentioned that is going to be my policy rule and here's my my rule for my policies and it's going to be a user defined event now because I've already set up my policy schema and I know that there is an expiration date on my policy I'm going to use that custom metadata field here it is here my expiration date and now I need to set my period for how often this poli these policies expire and these policies expire every year so it's going to be every one year and it's a recurring event because this happens every year that I need to renew my policy documents I want to be notified 30 days in advance of the policy expiration date that these policy documents need to be reviewed and renewed and I want to send an email message and I want to send a document alert I want to notify the document owner because that document owner is the person who is responsible for updating those policy or renewing those policy documents every year. You can also notify the administrators again, which I'm going to do. And this time I'm going to select everybody and click Save. All right, so now here's my policy user defined event rule, and I'm going to save it. Okay, and if I return to the list, now I have my bank statement rule and my policy rule. So now what I need to do is I need to go over to my document schemas area and apply the policies. So first of all I'm going to start with my bank statements and I'm going to edit my schema and I'm going to go to my event schedule. So here under the delete here is my rule that I've just created so after four years, I want my bank statements to be automatically deleted from the system. I'm going to click Save. And I'm going to go back to my list of schemas. And I'm going to look for my policy documents. And I'm going to apply my event schedule. So here are my user-defined events, but this is the one that I want to use. My policies expire after one year. I'm going to save that. Okay, so now that that is done, we've applied the rules to our schemas. Now we can go ahead and trigger the policies. I'm now in the FileHold desktop application, and here are my bank statements from 2010. So we can see that these will soon be coming up for expiration, and they'll be automatically deleted from the system. We can also have a look at my corporate policy documents, which is down here on Human Resources. And we can see the expiration date on these documents. And they're about to expire at this point. So um, 30 days prior to these dates listed here, the order of these documents, which is listed in the metadata pane, is Renee. The owner of these documents would have received a notification 30 days prior that this document needs to be attended to. So it either, either needs to be renewed or it needs to be rewritten. Now lastly, I want to take you over to our file hold calendar. So now I'm in the calendar and I'm going to show you the events that display here. In order to see the events in the calendar, you need to click on the Include Events button and that'll show the events in yellow on the calendar 
Uh, to see the two events that are happening on this day, you can click on this. And then to be taken to the document, you can just simply click on the option and that's going to take you directly to the document in your corporate policy area. So now that you've been alerted via email and your document alerts area, now you can go ahead and review your policy. Thank you for watching this video tour series. For more information, contact us at sales at or visit our website at www.filehold.com.